first thing is first do your research don't just hop on a plane and go check out a country check out its history check out the people try to uh, get on YouTube and Facebook and find the people in the groups and listen to how they talk what they about see if it's a good fit for you see if it's somewhere you blend in but let me tell you something I was so damn happy in Africa oh my goodness there's a lot of problems and we're gonna get to that but right now let's talk about the good before we get to the bad and the ugly I was in heaven I was in heaven as soon as I stepped off the plane it was so beautiful the hills were so green the sky was so blue it was so beautiful and let me tell you something a lot of y'all are scared we see this stuff on the news the most parts of Africa are so much safer compared to living in Atlanta Philly Baltimore Chicago it's so much safer maybe like 20 20 something people get killed all year in most places somewhere like Botswana so where was I I was down in southern Africa I ain't gonna say which country but I was in southern Africa uh, I think they're more like us culturally uh, they got this thing with apartheid there um, they united they fought back against apartheid their culture is more like us you don't have to go to a southern African and be like how do you feel about racism they're never gonna tell you there's no such thing as racism as opposed to somewhere in other parts of Africa where they've never had to deal with a uh, full-on white supremacy in their face they get it you know there's issues but they get it and people uh, for the most part 80% it was all good man people were happy to see me when you're just walking down the street and you know you're a normal black black person you're you dark skin the the brown skin even light brown you fit right in you fit right in the place people think you're another African until you talk depending how the way you dress you 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 look just like everybody you're gonna see where we come from all this nonsense about we was always here and yada 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 you look just like them you look just like them you even find out some of the food that we eat like cornbread it, it's some of the stuff they eat chitlins intestines is actually a delicacy in southern africa they fed me some some they tried to feed me some intestines man i didn't know what it was i took a bite out of that it was organs i was like uh apparently it's like a it's like a delicacy right for a guest you get you get to eat the heart and the lungs man i took a bite of that i wasn't trying to insult nobody i'm like girl i'm sorry i can't eat this man i can't eat this i can't eat this but let me tell you the first day i landed got my little airbnb whatever there was a club around the corner i came up in the club and uh, you know just chilling by myself in like nice little nice little club and uh started talking to the owner i didn't even know he was the owner i'm like yeah 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 what's up what's up i'm like this is my first day in africa he like for real this man walked over took me up in vip and sat me down at the table around like nine or ten beautiful black women like here take care of my brother take care of him boom sitting in there getting to know it man let me tell you something africans everybody's young the average age is 25 so everybody there is like 25 to 35 everybody's young everywhere you go all day all night all we do is dance and dancing and dancing and dancing and, ooh, ooh, and dancing these people will leave the club at two in the morning and then go to the next club it don't end until four in the morning and i'm like yo we going home right now nah, now nah, there's another club it don't close till 11 a.m dog i'm going home these people black people love to dance you see where we get it from now we might got them in singing that's arguable but dancing we cannot we, can, we can't we can't mess with these people they dance all day and all night all day all night you're going to start to see that uh you are a black american you realize your culture um i miss fried chicken and collard greens i ain't had that the food was really good let me tell you just being outside of america our food is so bad here i lost 20 pounds just eating just eating fresh food 
my the cow that I ate, the goat that I ate, it died like last week. The vegetables were just picked like last week. All organic, no GMOs. All that weight fell right off me. You're gonna realize that that we're eating bad over here. But man, mostly people, as soon as they hear the accent, they're like, brother, you're home. You're not, they don't even believe it. You're really a black American. Yeah, nah, you're lying. You come from here, you come from here and you move that. Nah, brother, I've been there 400 years, bro. I'm back home. Came to visit. Are you serious? People buying me shots and stuff. Be careful. People think you're rich. They think it's on TV. They might try to take advantage of you. So be careful on that. But mostly, it was all good, man. And let me tell you, the black people are so beautiful. There's more diversity in black people. There's more different looking types of black people. Like we look the same, but when you get like real close, it's a little bit different, but everybody looks the same. Somebody from Angola looks completely different than somebody in Zimbabwe, than a South African, than a Zambian. They look different. And then some people you don't know until they tell you, but you start to see what all black people have together. What, what is our collective culture of black people? We love music. We love to dance. That's something that's serious. Music and dance is it, it's something that the black has deep within their soul. We love it. It's not the same like everywhere else. And God, even people that were in the bar were like, hey, I got Sunday, I gotta wake up and go to church. I gotta go to church. You might just be walking down the street and somebody starts, hallelujah, just a group of brothers. God is huge, huge, huge. And you see how we got taken advantage of. Black people love God love God but then right after that it's back to dancing <laughs> dancing um, it's much safer as I said before if there's a fight on the street instead of everybody pulling out the camera people are gonna break it up most likely I mean you got issues here and there but it, it people are gonna break up a fight nah brothers nah 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 don't do that don't do that or you might get the fair one hey one on one let's go y'all two handle it like men it's like that. But let me tell you, I was in heaven, man. It was beautiful. The women were so soft. The, the smiles were so beautiful. Everybody was mostly in shape because they ain't eating all this GMO food, man. Just beauty everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. There's problems, and we'll get to them problems, but man, it was so beautiful. This is a good place to look for a wife. I'm not saying... Black America doesn't have good women that are fit for wives, or definitely are. Especially if you go out to the country, or on the edge somewhere, there's some definite good women in Black America. But Africa has some beautiful women. It is a good place to look for a wife and a husband. It's a good place. Let me tell you, if you're looking for, I told the brothers over there, I said some of this stuff about the gender war. I said some of these men over here, they expect a woman to pay 50% of the bills. They looked at me like I'm crazy. What are you talking about? The man in Africa pays for everything at least 80 to 90 percent the woman might be responsible for a little bit of food and you know how stuff getting cleaning supplies and stuff like that but mostly the man takes care of everything men take care of their families there i've seen i see more black families than i've ever seen in my life i've seen fathers taking their daughters out to go get ice cream it was it was a damn near shock i've seen so many black families it's crazy it was harsh there ain't a lot of jobs but let me tell you it's so beautiful Go to Africa for a visit. Don't go to look for a job. Hey, how many jobs over there? Go to start a business. Go to a country, go to two, three countries first, check it out, see how you feel, which one suits you, and then look for a business because there's a lot of opportunities, man. There's a lot of opportunities for you to come and bring over like Apple products, Apple computer products, all types of high-end products we got. You could sell it there. You could go there and get stuff, cloth, other stuff and bring it back here and sell it, oils and whatnot. There's a lot of room and opportunity for us and sky is the limit, man. Sky is the limit. They were very happy to see us, everybody, for the most part. Welcome home, brother. We're happy you made it back. Did you thank God for bringing you back? I said every day. Um, it was just, it was heaven, man. It was absolute heaven. If you could find a way to make some money online, man, you're going to be so much happier in Africa. The only thing that, ra that made me sad about Africa is that there wasn't too many black Americans there. When you see a black American there, it's like seeing another, <laughs> another, another one of your alien race. You see a brother there, hey, you from America? Yeah, where you from? New York? What's, what's good? It's, it's, it's click, click, man. We raid in on it. 
You start to see your people there, you get so happy. Welcome home. Welcome home. You start to see that we are our own tribe as well. And uh, a lot of the Africans, I sat around, I stayed there for about a year, year and a half, off and on. Um, the young Africans have questions because they got a lot of fire in them, but they don't exactly know what to do. Like, what should we do? Should we be protesting against the government? What, what should we do? And I try to guide them in the right place. Like, listen, y'all got to, the government is what it is. Y'all got to get the economy together. Y'all got to start getting this economy. Stop looking for a job. Start trying to start your business. Um, they asked me about what should we do about racism and yeah, 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 yeah. Try to guide them on one of that, man. You, you, you as a black American, you're like the older brother. So as you, when you go there, you're going to face two things. You're going to face admiration and animosity. Mostly admiration. Some people are going to have animosity. You think you're better than you, yada, yada, yada. But mostly it's admiration. You, you, you as a black American and the rest in the diaspora, Jamaica, even the brothers in uh, the UK, y'all are the fighters of the race. Because you got racism right in your face and you fight it. Black people are very kind and docile somewhere in between there uh sitting talking with the africans they say before the colonialism and you know they started the tribal wars we had problems but somebody from another tribe came through to your village and it was late and they said hey i need somewhere to graze my cattle and sleep for the night they would welcome them right stay for the night let me give you food graze your cattle over there in the morning then you go we're very welcoming people that's part of the problem we welcome too many people in the sand tribe if you went to the sand tribe to the sand village talking to them they're a marginalized people but if you talk to them they're the kindest people on earth the kindest people you've ever met wouldn't hurt a fly let me tell you something i've been to the himba village too the people in all red them people say what you want because they walk around with their breast out they they wash their ass every day and they're clean wasn't trash everywhere they dug a hole and threw their trash in the in the in the hole we're clean people. We're friendly people. You start to realize that, man. So don't don't get into all this this BS about Africans don't like us, yada yada yada, and we ain't really from Africa. This is nonsense. You're missing your you're missing your birthright. You have a right to go there and get the money. You have a right to go there and network with Africans and vice versa set up my company man it's about to get i'm about to get it smacking i already did a bit but really next year it's really going to open up i notice it's wide open for us man it, instead of being a music producer here go be a music producer in africa you, you'll you'll blow it way off the lid and you're worth more having been an american music producer you, they're just going to look at you like you're better and it's not always that some of y'all ain't shit but uh as one girl told me I asked them, am I considered like a colored or a white man? What do they consider me? They said below a white man, but above an African. And I just like, it's crazy. There is an inferiority, a complex with our brothers and sisters, but we're going to work on that. That's for another video coming here shortly. But let me tell you, I was in absolute heaven. Dance, party, drink. I had to slow down, man, because I was going, some of my brothers came and see me. I got to know a lot of people, pull me to the side. Hey, brother, slow down, slow down, slow down. And really, as long as you ain't being dumb, and putting it all over the internet they don't care about you sleeping with their women don't hurt their women don't embarrass them you know but they walk up to me is this your first time in africa have you been there? i've been there for a while have you had any african meat brother listen let me get, take my number I'll, I'll show you some decent women i will give you some decent women brothers are friendly and if you if you come there and you say i'm looking for a wife be careful saying that because they will their cousin will be at your door man africans are serious about marriage serious they will hook you up in a heartbeat ain't like here they will hook you up in a heartbeat man so as long as you're respectful just watch your ass sometimes you might have to check a nigga here and there but mostly no nah, it's 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 all good all love my suggestion is southern africa i know a lot of people like east africa west africa um i've been to southern africa a few places and i've been to ethiopia i suggest southern africa they're more like us they look like us. They are very westernized, but there's still that African aspect. And I think it has one of the best places for growth. But I'm telling you, brothers, come home. It was absolute heaven. Absolute heaven. Uh, let me add on just one more thing. 
maybe one of the most important things I forgot to mention. You're not going to be dealing with white supremacy all up in your face in the motherland. Now it is there. White people own a lot of stuff. And it is there. But uh, it's not all in your face. Like here. Um, one time we came out the club. The cops shut the club down. We come out. And he's, some brothers were so drunk, man. He climbed on the cop car and was dancing. Ooh, choo, ooh, choo. Please go home, sir. Go home. This man poured his beer all over the police car. Please go home, brother. Please go home. Ooh, choo. I was crying. I was about to record it, but I was like, nah, that's snitching. He might go to jail or something. Let me not record this. Let me not do that because they, they don't like recording all like that. But the reason I thought about it when I got back, why didn't, in America, man, they'd have, you jump on my cop car and pour beer all over it, they'd have beat him down. You know what I thought? Why that cop didn't smash him, beat that kid up? Because that was his son. That was his brother. That was his own people. You know, sometimes the cops will lump you up in Africa. They, they steal money and yada, yada, yada. But that's his own people. They ain't going to just shoot you like a dog down in the street. Because you're one of them. You're your own. You ain't dealing with that damn racism. People following you around the damn store and, and saying stuff. There's issues with tribalism. We'll get into that. But it ain't all in your face, man. Now, there's white people there, like I said. And they run a lot of shit. But when you walk up to them with that black American accent... Oh, they thought they were so tough yelling at their employees and all that shit. When you come in there with that black American accent in front of one of them, them Pakistani Indians, any of the Middle Easterners, the Asians who treat the Africans like trash, oh, they're not even going to make eye contact with you. They know about us. They know about our rep, and they know if they get on a line, we are going to get all up in that ass. Pause. That's worth half the trip right there. You realize, us around the world... As a black American, you're worth a lot more outside than you are inside. And people know, if I get out of line with this black person, it's not like one of the other Africans. Not all the Africans. Some of the Africans will bust your ass if they got out of the line. I've seen it. But they know an African American will smack the shit out of me if I get out of line. Now to the Africans, I've seen a lot of people getting abused and stuff. I'll get into that in this next video. But... One time I was walking down the street and some white man came up to some black man. His car was parked on the side of the road. It was blocking the white man's path. And a white man kicked his car and smacked it. Get out of the way! Get out of the way! He thinking it's back in apartheid. About 50-something year old man. This young, the brother got out. He's about in his 30s, late 20s. He got out of that car with a big ass stick. Walked right up to that mat. The white man, what are you doing? It was me and another old black man right next to him. The black man was old but, you know, healthy probably in his 40s 50s he was definitely under apartheid um that other brother across the street i think he was a sand brother he was light-skinned he smacked the dog poo out of this white man pow don't you touch my car Woo, man that boy he backed up quick so all the africans ain't docile some of them ain't playing but this black the old black man walked up and broke it up he said brother no don't hurt him let him go let him go that old black man who was under apartheid he saved that white man's life and the white man walked down the street, didn't even say thankful. He said, I'm making a case. Go make a case. I don't care. That, ma that, bro that boy was about to beat him to death with that damn stick. And that brother saved his life. And I said, wow. We are godly, godly people. And we are forgiving. Maybe too forgiving. But you start to see where we get it from. And what the true black is. What the true African, the true African is like. What the true black man is like. Now, we're losing that. We've lost our way in a lot of ways, even before any of these other people showed up. But you, it's still there. You still see it. So that's another reason to come home. And you might not see it in the inner city. It's there. But once you get out to the rural parts, the, like I said before, them kind people, you'll start to see how we truly are and what our true nature is. We are warriors. There's some true warriors in Africa, but we are a friendly and a godly people. And that's something we got to remember. Even in times of war, be one.